Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We are uh, celebrating Valentine's Day. Well, we're not celebrating Valentine's Day, but the world is celebrating here in Brazil. And uh, welcome to our, our workshop today on why beauty matters more than ever. Yeah. Yeah, we are working on this, uh, let's say lectures, I don't know. Ah, these meetings to get to, uh, together yes. about why beauty matters. And uh, more than ever, more than isn't ever. it, Richard? Because we have uh, a lot of uh, banalization of, about this concept of beauty today, and we will uh, discuss about this during our uh, lectures, our meetings, weekly meetings. And today we have uh, something special. First of all, I'd like to say that me and Richard, we work at the language center of Faculdade uh, Trilogica Kepi Pacheco uh, that is uh, bringing to, to the, uh, our students not only language courses but is bringing this science of analytical trilogy that is the science that um, inspires our meeting, weekly meetings yeah. Yeah, about arts in this sense. So uh, we also uh, speak about this cultural and uh, also uh, psychological uh, and social subjects in our and scientific subjects in our in our lectures, isn't yeah, it, Richard? For sure. You know, you were saying about the uh, Fabrizio was talking about the what did you say? The banalization of evil. I th of, of banalization of good. I think beauty is not only banalized. I think it's almost ignored as a. Uh, as a conscious thing. Obviously people try to look good and they, there's this focus in a sort of a se sensual way. But the idea of, of beauty being an important element in our system, I don't know that many people have this idea. Yeah. Fabrizio has a general sense that I really, I really need to make the thing beautiful consciously. We do it unconsciously because we want to make our house beautiful or whatever, but the, the sense of beauty as a philosophical concept, as important for our psychological, emotional health, I don't think anybody talks about that. Yeah, this, uh, the, this, uh, you're talking about the idea of beauty as a, uh, f, uh, some food for our, our yeah. soul. That, yeah, that not just as, oh, that's, that's beautiful, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. That, that's so important, yeah. Yeah, it really because is. Of, yeah, because of, of course, for example, many students, uh, they say, our students, they say, ah, teacher, we, uh, we haven't been taught, I mean, to appreciate beauty, to appreciate culture, to appreciate art. So they, they maybe think that this idea of beauty is something that is not really belonging to our to our yeah. uh, being, to our life, yeah. and Dr. Kepe in his books shows exactly the opposite, that this is something essential yeah. to relink our being, our essence, to the Creator and also to the world, yeah, inside and outside. It is, is the importance, yeah. We haven't shown, I don't think we've shown this yet. Did I bring the picture of Van Gogh painting the boots. I don't think I did that. There's a, there's a, a famous painting of Van Gogh where he paints uh, some boots of working people. <laughs> it's really interesting because the boots are totally desgastado. <laughs> they have holes in them and everything. But he paints them with such attention to detail, with such love. And I thought that's, that's where art is important. It tries to show the simple things of everyday life or important things of everyday life, but with attention to the right color, the right f um, proportions, yeah. right? This is something beautiful, or somebody who's writing a beautiful piece of music, they want the melody to be nice, the harmonies to be beautiful. It's, 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 it's like, and this has application for us in our everyday life. It's yeah. important for us to have this artistic sensibility, let's say. So you're saying that something that we consider like uh, absolutely secondary, can have behind uh, something really deep, something really beautiful yeah. that helps us also to understand the world and the things. Yeah, yeah you're, have a, you're saying it better than I did. That's exactly. No, no, no. Right. I'm <laughs> just, uh, I'm just reinforcing what it's you said. <laughs> Does this? Let's go. Uh, let's go on. Just uh, because these. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, Fabrizio Villotti yeah. and Richard yeah, okay. Jones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's go on. So uh, again, this uh, this lecture is based on this incredible book of Dr. Kepes, Sociopathology, 
We will also use another book that is the origin of illness to show uh, to show some aspects of beauty and how art can bring this consciousness to people. Yeah. So we start again with uh, with um, like a slide uh, expressing the importance of art and beauty in our life. So yeah, uh, yeah I, it's pretty easy to read this, right? I say that art is the fundamental element for establishing contact with life. Yeah, art, beauty, uh, the sense of aesthetics. Not aesthetics in terms of getting your fingernails done or something, although that could be necessary too, but the, the real sense of um, the, import, the really importance of life. Somebody who takes the, the attention to do something well. My father used to say, a job worth doing is a job worth doing well, right? Un, un, un trabalho que vale a pena, vale a pena de fazer, vale a pena de fazer bom, bem, com, com excelência. I, I love that idea. I didn't like it much when I was a teenager when he was telling me, you know, because we always rebel from the things our fathers say. But as I got, as I got a little older, I realized, see, my father's gotten, he's gotten very smart. Yeah. Over the years. There's something really beautiful. If you're going to do something, trying to do it well, this is an artistic sensibility. And this, this is, uh, Richard, this is aesthetics, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, it's like, it's not something secondary. Yeah, it's totally important. Yeah. yeah. Let's go on the next. I have the impression that God establishes direct contact with humanity through aesthetics. Yeah, it's a beautiful phrase so this is what you were saying yeah. uh, so aesthetics is not only something linked uh, uh, necessarily to art but is linked to some expression of our inner self isn't it Richard mm -hmm. so this is very important the way we do things the way we work the, the way we remember last week we had an, an interesting uh, uh, lecture about the way we keep our house, our cars, our things. So this is an expression of our inner self. So maybe if we, uh, if our house, our home, let's say, is a little bit yeah, in disorder, let's say, messy, right? as we say, this is uh, saying something about our yeah. inner balance or unbalance, and the opposite also, if we keep <laughs> our things, yeah, in a, in a good way, so maybe this can be important. So this is a, the aesthetics is a, a, an, expression, as an expression, a manifestation of some balance or some, some neurotic elements that sure. we have inside. I, I, re I remember, I have a picture in my classroom. If we ever go back to having classrooms, classes in the classroom, you'll see this. My father gave this to me. I have a, uh, a picture of the earth that was taken from the Apollo spaceship when they went to the moon. Can you, and you know, can you imagine that? You're, you're in a spaceship and you're looking back at the world. And what do you say? Do you look at this beautiful planet and you say, wow, look at that great technology. Look at that great mathematics. No, you say, my God, it's beautiful. <laughs> like the <laughs> God's world, the world is beautiful. That's the first thing you think about. And uh, so all the, uh, the colors of nature, the harmony of nature, this is about beauty, it's aesthetic. It works together perfectly. We were trying one time to help some friends paint a house and they wanted to paint their house the colors of nature. Let me tell you, it's impossible. It's impossible to paint a house the colors of nature. You look at green, you don't see one shade, un ton, de verge, you see a hundred to, all in one leaf, in one folia. You can't duplicate, it's impossible to duplicate that. The artists are trying to duplicate the beauty of nature without being completely successful. Some of them come closer than others, <laughs> as we've discussed many times in these lectures, but there's something about the, the harmony of yeah. beauty that's really powerful, guys. You look at the planet and you think, oh my God, it's beautiful. Right. When we go to Minas Gerais, Richard, I really, I always, uh, really, I'm, I'm, I'm astonished. It's so, so beautiful the nature. And as you said, you, uh, when you, you look at the nature, you say, uh, you probably see thousands of shades of green. So it's so amazing that you see, wow, 
uh, nature is so beautiful, is so perfect, then you can see really the creation. So this, this feeling that we have inside is something that is so important, guys, because uh, it's our link with the Creator. Yeah. This is our, uh, like, uh, something that nature is arousing inside of us, this, this you know, feeling, this consciousness of yeah. the existence yeah. of this beauty, that we, it's not only outside, but it's inside of us also. Yeah. It's Just it's looking at the present. nature. Yeah, this is why, for, for example, many people, they go to the beach and they, wow, they see that beautiful sunset. <laughs> they have these colors that you can't repeat yeah. and, it, and they change all the time. Yeah. It's, it's very dynamic. Oh. You <laughs> see how aesthetics and beauty is so dynamic. It's not mo monotonous. And, and yeah. our, our technology cannot capture that. You've, seen, you've had that a million times. You take a picture of somebody and uh, you don't see exactly the yellow that the person was wearing or the <laughs> color of the eyes, you know. Our eye is much more capable than a camera, much more capable, much more sophisticated. So we can capture the, the subtlety, sutileza, now, the subtlety of color much better than a mechanical device. So when we put all of our emphasis in technology, as the bringer of beauty. No, no, beauty exists way beyond technology. Our technology is trying to capture it insufficiently. Even these microphones, they don't capture the, 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 the total aspects of the voice. You know, they don't capture all those nuances. Very difficult to do that. Yeah, because also, for example, our voice is uh, like, uh not only the voice that is coming out from our mouth, but is our body vibrating, is a resonance, is a, an energy. Yeah. So it's, not, it's interesting that the technology is not uh, capable to capture all no. these nuances. No, it's yeah. not. It's, it's very not. interesting. Let's go on, uh, Filippi. Music, so in this light of, of art, uh, aesthetics capturing the beauty of God, the link with the divine, music would be the sound of the creator. Um, all the elements of sound that we can create and that we can do with instruments and stuff is the total sound of the Creator. Well, not even the total sound. The total sound must be <laughs> infinitely bigger than that. We capture a little bit with our ears, you know. But anyway, it's interesting. Music would be the sound of the Creator also because musicians, for example, when they are really, really connected, they are just channels retransmit, capturing this energy and transforming this energy into notes, harmony, yeah. rhythm, yeah. so this, this, uh, this beauty. Yeah. So uh, uh, somehow it's, a, it's like a picture. Eh? What we do is a, like a picture yeah. of the Creator. It's not, uh, it's not, we are not capturing, the, 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 of course, the, the, the whole phenomenon. Yeah. We are reproducing some uh, aspects of this. Yeah. But anyway, trying to, we're yeah. trying. <laughs> Yeah. Musicians or artists are trying to sometimes let's, badly. Let's go back to the sculpture. No, no, back. Sculpture and painting are the manifestation of his forms and colors. So, music, the sound, sculpture, and painting, manifestation of forms and colors, indicating that um, sound, music, happens before the human being. Right, the the existence of music. I remember once watching a documentary about Leonardo da Vinci oh. and they were talking about how when he was a kid he loved to observe nature. He particularly liked to watch birds flying, birds in flight. And then the documentary said and in this moment Leonardo was developing the laws of flight. No, he wasn't developing the laws of flight, he was trying to understand them. They existed before he started to define what they were. Now we mathematize them, we put these things into formulas, but what the formula is, is a consequence of something prior. It's an attempt to explain a reality that already exists. Can you understand that? Right? We're trying to explain, we're trying to define. An artist is trying to show something that he observes. A musicians trying to capture something that he hears in an often incomplete way or partial way of something that exists prior. This is God. This is the divine creation. 
This is how I've come to understand God, and, anyway. And this, yeah, and this is why, for example, every artist captures these elements in a different way. So you can say so. It depends also on our capacity to be connected with these elements, the way we reproduce them. Yeah, because you know? I was thinking, I come from a, from Canada. You know, we're basically an atheistic country. And when I when I first came to Brazil, I was really impressed with the Brazilians' uh, willingness. Dispose of sound to talk about their spiritual life, their relationship with God and Jesus. I, I asked in a classroom one time. I said, "Who do you admire?" Yeah, I expected people to say, "My father, my mother, my uncle, my teachers." One one student said, "God, I admire God." And I remember thinking, "Wow, can <laughs> can you talk can you talk about God here?" And so my 19 years in Brazil has sort of been my attempt to to try to have a relationship as you Brazilians do naturally with this spiritual part of yourselves. And some of that I've done through art and this understanding Dr. Kepi has brought that art represents a, uh, a reflection of a divine creation. I think that's really beautiful yeah. in his work. Uh, Felipe, let's go on. Next. Okay. Architecture and imitation of the divine creation. These are the links that remind us of our supernatural origin. Well, there they are. This is the reason why I come from a country that has a lot of arts. Yeah, so yeah. Italy, my country, yeah. is uh, so important World because leader. of arts. World and leader. you can see that at least in the past, there, uh, the always, um, there was always this, this connection, for example, in the churches, in the building, with the spiritual elements. And, and, uh, but Dr. Kepe comes with a very interesting idea, because uh, he said, okay, art in the past were linked to churches, to religion, especially Christianity. Uh, uh, Christianity and, uh, but he said, look, God is not only this. So, for example, when an artist paints something, like Van Gogh, you said, that he painted the boots, <laughs> but in a way that transcends the boots. They are not boots. There is something behind that he brings to us. That's a good point. He's capturing he something transcendental that comes from God. So this is also something linked to spirituality, yeah. isn't it, Richard? And, and he was putting that into to poor people's boots. I really like that aspect of Van Gogh. Sorry to take away <laughs> no, it's your okay. idea. No, but it's okay. But this is important. So, for example, we, many times we have this idea that, for example, art and uh, spirituality are linked to this uh, idea of uh, spirituality as something sometimes heavy, very heavy, sometimes very serious. And not that, for example, joy, joy. Uh, happiness is linked to God. Yeah. All right. So when arts also represent through music, through painting, through sculpturing, whatever you want. Through fashion. Through fashion. Through anything. These kind of elements, happiness, joy, yeah. this is also a connection to God. So many times we have this, uh, because this, this idea is an old idea. What is uh, a, a, a sacred, uh, like painting, is linked to God? What is not... Uh, linked to this sacred elements is not linked to God. This is profound. Or how do you say this? Uh, uh, like a mundane, yes. something mundane. Yes, yes. Yeah, in in English we can say. And not that actually everything comes from God. So even if we don't paint uh, like God or Jesus Christ, etc., but it's something that brings us this consciousness of the beauty uh, of life. This is a connection with God also. Do you know, do you know what I'm missing now, Fabrice? We can't see the eyes of the students. Yes. <laughs> it's like we're looking into this camera. Hello, I want to tap Hi, guys. <laughs> Are you there? Because I think what, what Fabrice has been bringing here in, in this lecture with these quotes of Dr. Kepi and just his, his artistic sensibility is something so beautiful. I, I'm like feeling... Are the people? Are they? Are you? Are, like, are you here? Are you, are you? Are you? Are you getting any sense of what? Because yeah. I feel there's a really beautiful vibration going on here. Do you? Is there anybody got a comment about what we're talking about? No, no comments. Is there anybody there? <laughs> How many people you do we have, Felipe? How many are watching? So it's a small group today. All right. So we have this intimate time together. That's very nice.
Yeah. Okay. So let, let's go on because I now, now I want to show you oh, yeah, a very okay. interesting example of Fabrizio art. has brought us such a great example here, you guys. This These, is really wonderful. Yeah, this is a great uh, painter, probably we can say also architect of the Middle Ages, Giotto. And he lived exactly at the same time of uh, Dante Alighieri. Mm. And pre-Renaissance then. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Don Diniz in Portugal, yeah, at the same time. Uh, well, you know that Dr. Claudia wrote that book, The Secret History of Brazil, yes. bringing us a lot of uh, elements about this, the connection that uh, exists between, for example, Italy, Portugal, and then Brazil. So I'm very happy like, to, to bring this example of Jota. This is a great painter with a great... Uh, a great um, Sense, how do you say sensibility? Sensibility, sensibility about uh, transcendence. Let's see uh, something. He painted is in, in a famous chapel in Padova, Padua, in, uh, in northern Italy. Is this a fresco? This is a fresco. fresco. Yes, he painted a series of fresco about what vices and virtues. And I, 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 I took this about envy <laughs> because, according to Dr. Kepi's uh, science, envy is an import, uh, probably is the basis of pathology together with inversion, we know this principle. But envy is, uh, is something really, really important to understand our psychopathology, also the sociopathology, Richard, yeah. Yeah? especially when we speak about relationships uh, uh, between, bit, uh, among people. And this is so interesting because it also in our course is like a conflicts management, uh, or in our faculdade, Capri Pacheco, we have these courses about conflict management yeah. or uh, leadership. Yes. Yeah? Uh, uh, these are English courses, post-graduation courses in English. So we bring all these elements. And the, the understanding of this phenomenon of envy is really, really important. So he, uh, Giotto, painted this uh, envy in a very, very peculiar way. Let's see how. Let's see a little bit the details. Let's read a little bit something and then we see the details. Richard. So en envy in this uh, fresco is represented by an old woman with a snake, always a snake, right? Snake coming out of her mouth. The snake attacks and blinds her. This fits with the root of the word envy in Latin, invideri, which literally means not to see. Wow. And Dr. Kep in his books exactly takes this literal, literal uh, origin of the word. Yeah. Invideri in means not. Videre in Latin means to see. So this is what already Giotto painted with this idea that Invidere, in envy, means not to see, yeah? So let's see a little bit the details, so we... Yeah, also what's... I don't, maybe you're going to talk about it. Let's, yeah, let's, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, can you see, for example, this snake coming out from the mouth and blinding the, the person, that, the envious person, yeah? So it's an incredible transcendental What's perception. coming out of her own mouth blinds her, right? It's not a being blinded from the outside, it's a being blinded from inside. So what comes out of the mouth, which reflects the attitudes and the feelings, no. comes out and attacks us, makes us not see. That's no. really great. So you see that pathology, we could say in modern terms, in scientific terms, yeah. psychopathology is something that first of all comes from inside, not from outside. Doesn't come, come from the others comes from us. Yeah. Of course the others they have problem, but we should also see what are we doing, what we're thinking, what we are Our bigger uh, feeling. Big, big problem is inside. Is inside, yeah. <laughs> so go on, go back. Now, I want to just ma mention the ears. Yeah, sorry. One of the students talked to me today when I showed this in the class. They said, well, what about these big ears? You know what I think? I think those big ears are for listening to gossip, <laughs> right, and listening to all the bad things about other people. I've got these huge ears that can pick up anything, you know, any signal I want anywhere. <laughs> That's yeah. what I think the big ears are about. Yes, pro yeah, probably. <laughs> it's interesting. Yes, it's, it's a pathological attitude, yeah? <laughs> yes. Uh, go on, uh, Philippe. 
Envy is represented by a diabolical being with horns rising out of the headpiece. Headpiece is like the part in the hat, right? And there's the horns coming mm -hmm. up. The woman holds on to a bag tightly, a symbol of avarice as opposed to charity. Let's go back to, uh, to the other. To, yeah, no. Yeah. The next? Yes. So, no. Yes, this is. So, thank you. So, you see the horns, yeah, coming. Yeah. So, uh, you, uh, we see also the spiritual connection of envious people. An envious person is not just a, an envious person, but there is a spiritual demonic connection. So, look at the, uh, at the perception of the, the artist, incredible. of the painter. It's incredible perception. Where would he get that? From the church, I imagine. Yes, yes, from the chapel. It's in Padua. It's a very famous, it's called Cappella degli Scrovegni in Padua. And where he painted these virtues and vices. Eh? I'd like to bring next, oh, next let's week. Let's do, this. do more. This is really yeah, interesting. Yeah, because it's very interesting. So, you see, the artist who was more linked to the, the, the theology and philosophy of the time, not just pop culture, which we have today, right? Our pop culture has excluded in, in Grandi Parci all of that connection with yeah. the more. Um, metaphysical aspects of the human being. So the artists in the past, they had more connection to that. So it's deeper somehow than our pop culture. You, you look at the um, Andy Warhol, you know, who did a, a painting of a Campbell's soup can. That's sort of the, that's sort of the, the um, image of our modern art is like that. And this art from the past, it brings these other elements that give us an understanding of the world we live in and our own selves. Yeah. Let's go on. Flames burn at envy's feet, symbolizing both hell and the burning desire to possess things that belong to others. So may I say something? Yeah. So this is very, very interesting, these flames. Let's show the flames uh, the next. Yeah. yeah. You, can you see the flames that are burning the feet of the stage? That's amazing, this. Uh, but this is interesting because Giotto, they, uh, he reflected this transcendental perception, but it is more theological and philosophical. Now, what is the contribution that Dr. Kepe brings? It's scientific contribution. So Dr. Kepe, as we were talking before, Richard, remember, uh, is, is like expanding the, the, the idea of envy in a scientific way. Yeah. So envy is not as people commonly think, oh, I, I wish what belongs to others. Yeah, that's a kind of envy, but this is not enough, yeah? yeah. So it's interesting Deep. that... Yeah, because yeah. the snake is attacking ourselves, right? So. Envy is the rejection of everything good that exists. It's the source of illness, failure, fracaso, and all our unhappiness. So this is the... It's the rejection of the good that exists. It's not just the wanting the good things from yeah. other people or wanting to destroy the good things that other people have, to destroy other people's lives, but also to destroy our own happiness. It's a bigger concept in Kepi's science. And this is something that, uh, Richard, that people struggle with because me, am I destroying the goodness? But I want to live a good life. I'm, I, I, I mean, I want the best for everybody. So, in general, Dr. Kepi always says, people in general think that 90% of their time they are like willing the good for their lives and for the life of the others. They are like uh, fighting for the best. And sometimes they make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we, through his scientific work, clinic, serious work, Dr. Kepe brings exactly the opposite idea. That probably 10% uh, of, our, of our time we do right things and 90% of our, of our time we are like thinking about bad things or having bad thoughts or have, having bad feelings, something like that. So this is something that influences absolutely our relationships with our inner self and with the others, with the outer world. The word outside, isn't it? Isn't wow. <laughs> so this is something to Tenebroso, think about. Tenebroso, no? <laughs> <laughs> so, but, okay, the good, the good news, we have a good news. If yeah. we start working a little by little with these elements inside and understanding these, these things that we're talking about, so maybe 
We can. We have. We have. There's hope. Yes. A, a comment, Philippe. Some Great. comments, oh. yeah. Yeah, of envy, right? Claude René, never seen this perspective of yeah. envy in this way. Yeah, this is, well, who has? <laughs> we don't even talk about this idea. You know, if you talk about the sins, pecados of people, we don't talk about envy. No. We, we talk about somebody who's like really greedy, ganancioso, or somebody who eats a lot or has vicious vices, you know, pornography. We talk a lot about those things, but we don't about talk sex, about sex. Yeah, yeah, or problems with yeah, sex, yeah. sexuality. Yes, sexuality. We, so it's it's a it's a yeah. totally new concept. Yes, this is totally new. Also, because for example, I was thinking uh, about a relation between, for example, what, for example, the church brought this idea that the the, the scenes especially are concentrated in sexuality in sex. Yeah. And I was thinking about what Freud, Sigmund Freud did, because he was atheist, but he did the same in a scientific way, because yeah. when he, he was a genius, Freud, of course, because he um, discovered that the origin of the problems is in, in our psychological life. But when he elaborated his theories, he put like the, let's say the solution on the understanding of these processes, this, uh, the pathological processes in what? In uh, Oedipus complex or this uh, uh, pansexualism that we can say. Yeah. Uh, and so he debased, he diminished actually the, va the value of psychological life that is much bigger than our physiological f uh, life. Yeah, and he diminished the seriousness too because if the problem yeah. is envy that we have, against goodness, then that's much more serious than just having problems with our sexuality, right? Yeah. Or problems with our father or our mother. That's a more serious problem. So it's um, this view that they understood uh, hundreds of years ago, we've lost that idea today. And Dr. Kepi is rescuing that knowledge, let's say. And he rescues especially uh, uh, a saint of the Catholic Church, Saint Basil, that he uh, focus more on envy than on other sins. Yeah. So envy as the origin of these uh, right. neurosis, psychosis, we can say today, anyway, of any kind of illnesses. In our yeah, if, if envy is the, the, the refusing good things, that would explain the original problem of the original human beings, right? Refusing the goodness that they had. That's really serious. So. <laughs> And important to understand, because if we start to see that, we, we can control a little bit. And yeah. then we start to return to the truth of ourselves. That's really beautiful. Yeah. So can you imagine how this element can influence our lives and, our, and uh, the life of the other people? And imagine that such a person gets the power has a social, political, or economic power, so a, a big influence on our society. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what, the, uh, what can happen? Yeah. What, what this pathology can produce in a society, especially when this system of the laws of uh, economic rules, etc., reflects this attitude coming from inside. Yeah? Yeah. So this is what Dr. Kepi calls also the pathology of power. Yeah, influence. Yep. Envy makes us blind, just like the snake, right? Mm -hmm. Makes us blind and prevents us from enjoying all the good things the world has to offer. And thus, the envious person makes his life very unpleasant. Thus is just intel for any of you who get fixated on the words, right? So. Uh, envy makes us blind, prevents us from enjoying all the good things the world has to offer, and thus the envious person makes his life very unpleasant. So people suffer a lot, isn't it, Richard? Because, for example, I think I'm suffering because I don't have that car, because I, I can't travel wherever I want, because I don't, I don't have what I, I don't know. My boss makes me crazy. My boss makes me crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And not that this suffering is actually coming from this, yeah. let's say, negative feeling or emotion, or whatever, attitude, uh, Dr. Kepe calls this uh, an attitude, yeah. to prevent ourselves 
of uh, uh, enjoying the good things in life. So imagine how a nervous person suffers. Mm. And we can say that everybody has a little, yeah? let's say a little, yeah. <laughs> or this. Okay, so, Richard, yes. now we have uh, an important part. So, when you see that, <laughs> you see the consequences of suddenly making beauty a relative thing or trying to um, deliberately uh, go against that to shock. We have created a lot of problems in our society because of this mentality, not just because of the art, but the mentality behind that has created a lot of distortion in the way we, we even think or organize our society. Yeah. So this is an important thing because you see that, for example, when we saw that painting, Jota's painting, we see that the interest of the artist is to transmit something, a message to the people, a message that uh, keeps us thinking about something really relevant for our lives. Yeah. And you see that, for example, many times in modern art there is a kind of banalization of the message. So the, 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 the center... It's shock to shock. Yeah, right? it's shock not to shock. Not, not because the, you want to, to yeah. bring some consciousness about yeah. something really relevant to have a better life also. Yeah, and if the artist is bringing something in, in modern art as a criticism of the modern society, this can be very valid and yeah. very important, Absolutely. of course. That it depends on the intention of the artist, right? But you can see some of the things making statues from Merda, for example. This is kind of like, this is just a shock. Come. <laughs> How to identify envy, which is something we don't want to see. It's an excellent question. How can you see something that you don't want to see? Uh, I, I guess through our consequences, right? The consequences yeah. in our lives. If we're, if we're suffering, if we're having a, a lack of success in some area, if we're sabotaging, these are examples of envy. For example, yeah. you reach or, you, or you can do a psychoanalysis. <laughs> That's the best way, but anyway, just doing psychoanalysis is the best way. But for example, uh, think about how many times we complain about something, how many times we get irritated, annoyed by some, someone or some situation. Mm, we're not uh, grateful. I'm not grateful. How many times we, do, uh, we, we feel... Uh, dissatisfied with things in life. Mm. We, I feel dissatisfied about my wife, about my husband, about my work, about my, the money I get, any, anything. I mean, uh, these are, it's, uh, this is like a thermometer of our envy, of what we reject. Right. There is something behind there. These are symptoms, of course. Or, for example, if a person uh, suffers from anguish, anxiety, panic, fear, uh, Shyness also could we, we could yes, say yeah for sure uh, timidez and eh? shyness we'll deal with that in our leadership and communication course <laughs> which starts tomorrow we'll deal all with that shyness and fear of yeah. speaking and stuff so great <laughs> yeah so you see that uh, art can bring a, a very important messages or not this is why for example when the focus of art Richard is not art like willing to bring something relevant. Uh, in, in many ways, I mean, uh, there is not a specific way, yeah. but art, the center of art is the artist and many times the pathology of the artist, because this is something, Richard, that is really hard to say, but also artists can have a pathology, yeah? and so the art, the consequences of this art can be also a consequence of some unbalance, or not, of course. Depends on the intention of what, what happens, yeah. But what happened in the 20th century that Roger Scruton is willing to, 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 to like, uh, to, to, uh, Il to illustrate. illustrate, yeah, is this, uh, this element that uh, we lost the yeah. way, he said, we lost the way, yeah. so, okay. So, Richard? Okay, now we're going to sing some songs. We have? Our regular Friday night, <laughs> uh, Friday morning party. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go anyway if you have any comments or any maybe any question you yes can, it's very you nice to hear your comments chat, yeah. you guys it helps us a lot yeah. to know what you're what you're appreciating what's what's resonating with with you what you like we're going to do a very famous song now 
We are going to try to do this. We're going to try to do a very famous song. Yes, we, we should. We should always preface by saying we shall try to do. Um, this is one of the really uh, great songs from the '60s uh, that has been analyzed in in uh, poetry classes. You know that. So I'm not sure it's even easy to understand what's being said here, but the melody is wonderful, and it's based on Bach. Bach. And uh, well, we hope you like it. <laughs> okay. Okay, Felipe. Everything's set one, for you. All right. Okay. Great. One, two, one, two. Skip the light fandango Turn, Turn cartwheels across the floor I was feeling kind of seasick But the crowd called out for more The room was humming harder As the ceiling flew away When we called out for another dream The waiter brought a tray And so it was That later As the miller told his tale Face at first just ghostly Turned a wider shade of pale Said there is no reason, but the truth is plain to see. But I wandered through my play cards, would not let her be one of sixteen vessel virgins. We're leaving for the coast And although my eyes were open They might just as well have been closed And so it was That later As the miller told his tale Face at first just ghostly Turn a wider shade of
beautiful song. Beautiful song, my gosh. Yeah. And it's because it's based on Bach, it has this kind of progression, you know? Yeah. Beautiful progression in music. I'd but like to say universal because uh, many, many songs are based on this yeah. progression. Yeah, so you see how beauty and art can influence, uh, and it's <laughs> always beautiful to listen to, yeah? Very now, good. something much more mundane, <laughs> 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 but fun anyway. All right, we'll do one of the first Beatles songs. This is the first song I heard when I was 10 years old. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, a long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is I Want to Hold Your Hand yeah. by the Beatles. Because it's Valentine's Day, right? Dia dos Namorados. So. Let's go. One, two, one. Oh, oh yeah, I'll tell you something. I think you'll understand when I say that something I want to hold your hand I want to hold your hand I want to hold your hand Oh please say to me you'll let me be your man and please say to me you let me hold your hand And let me hold your hand You let me hold your hand And when I touch you I feel happy inside It's such a feeling that my love I can hide, I can hide, I can hide something I think you'll understand when I say that something I want to hold your hand I want to hold your hand I want to hold your hand and when I touch you I feel happy inside it's such a feeling that my love I can hide, I can hide, I can hide Yeah, you say that something I think you'll understand When I got that something I want to hold your hand I want to hold your hand I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. Woo! <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> A lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. See you. We'll talk next to you week. next week, okay? Bye bye, guys. <laughs> bye bye for now. <laughs>